Hey guys, how you going? My name is Dom and welcome to your fourth Pug tutorial. So in this one, I want to talk about how to add attributes to HTML elements and also talk about some of the advanced features that you'll find in Pug in relation to attributes. So, uh, just keep in mind that I have the, the Pug command line tool running with the watch flag, which means that when I save this index Pug file, it's going to generate the index HTML file inside the HTML directory. All right, so let's start. Inside here, I've got a, um, a doc type, HTML tag, head, and then body. Okay, so let's uh, demonstrate attributes using an input element. So we'll say, okay, body, and then add an input field right there. If I save this one and check the output, we start with that right there. So let's make this input field a password field and give it a name. So back inside here, let's put braces next to the input field, sorry, input tag, and then write out some attributes. So I'll say, okay, input and give it a type of password. So the syntax is the same as HTML once you get inside the bracket. So that's saying input type password. If I save this one and check the output, we get that right there as expected. Okay. Now we can add multiple attributes to a HTML element by putting a space after that. So we can say, okay, type is password and the name is IMPPWD. So if I save this one and check the output, we get both attributes there perfect. All right. Now, in terms of the advanced features of uh, Pug with attributes, one of them is the, the use of JavaScript inside the attribute value. So for example, let's make a new attribute and we'll call this one data-js or JavaScript, uh, just you know as an example, equal to, now here we're gonna use an ECMA script 2015 string, uh, string literal. So, let's put two backticks down here, and inside here we can embed we can embed an expression. So put a dollar sign followed by two curly braces. Now inside here we can put some JavaScript logic or an expression. So let's say something like this. We'll say if five is greater than two, then we want to make the data JS attribute value something like OK. Otherwise, let's make the value not okay, All right? So now if I save this one and check the output, we get data.js is equal to okay. And that's because five is greater than two. Let's make this if one is greater than two. Saving this one, we get it is not okay. All right, so you can add JavaScript expressions or um, logic inside your attribute values. All right, so pretty cool there. Now, uh, you can also add classes to an element um, all at once. So uh, let's go down here and make a new element. We'll make a new div tag. Okay, now up here though, let's define a new JavaScript. Let's first actually indent my code properly. Put that down there. All right, so let's create a new JavaScript array. We can add a dash here, and that means that this line is going to be a JavaScript line. Right, so dash, and then we'll say const my classes is equal to a typical array of strings. All right, so let's put an array here. Inside here, we'll put a few elements. We can say, okay, class one, class one, class two, and then class three. All right, so here we have defined a JavaScript array using the dash. All right, now we can add all these classes to this div element like this. We can say, okay, once again, using the braces, we can say class, so the class attribute similar to that right there is then equal to simply then my classes. So if I save this one in the output, we get a div and a class um, attribute of all these classes right there separated by a space. Okay, so quite convenient. 
Now, if I was to go back inside here and add a class to the beginning of this element, the traditional way, so div and then dot, something like, um, uh, I don't know, my div, okay? If I save this one, we're defining a class here and also more classes inside here like that, all right? The output looks like this. We keep the initial my div class. So that means that that right there is going to append to the current class list. All right, so keep that in mind. Now we can do a similar sort of thing with inline styles. So down here, let's make a new div once again. And up here, let's make a new JavaScript object. So once again, using the dash to signify a line of JavaScript, we can say, okay, dash and then const my styles. Inside here, in this object, we can then define the CSS styles using JavaScript object syntax. So we can say, okay, let's make the text color as red, put a comma. Let's say the background color is going to be blue. All right. Now, down here, we can do virtually the same thing. We can say, okay, div and then style is equal to my styles. All right. Saving this one gives us that right there. So we have this style attribute and then all the CSS styles formatted nice and neatly for us. Okay. So once again, very convenient. Now, um, we can also do again, a similar thing using the attributes. So we can actually define attributes as a JavaScript object and then put that on the actual um, element itself. So let's make once again, a new element this time let's make it an image element so img okay now up here let's define a new constant okay const my attributes once again equal to a javascript object so we'll say okay my attributes let's put the attributes as a javascript object so we'll say okay src source is going to be my photo dot png the alt text will be, this is my photo. Okay. Now to actually add this to the element, we can put an ampersand. Okay. Attributes, then brackets and pass in my attributes right here. So a similar thing to the above examples, but this time we're actually using the and attributes syntax instead of a, you know, a bracket. All right. Now if I save this one, what do we get? Well, we get boom that right there image source my photo alt text this is my photo perfect all right so once again very convenient now uh, one more thing let's talk about boolean attributes so things such as input type you know text and then have that being disabled or something like um, input type uh, the checkbox and then make that check so those those single word boolean attributes okay so down here let's make a new input field okay give it a type of you know just text normal and let's make that text um, field disabled we can say okay disabled no need for a equals and then something else just disabled and then pug will automatically add that to the actual attribute list so if i save this one what do we get we get that right there type text and it's disabled now what if i was to change the doc type for this um document to something like transitional right, now transitional does not support the single single word attributes so if i save this one what happens we'll check the output and this time we get disabled equals disabled so pug is going to automatically make sure that the output is valid for the actual document type which is obviously quite cool um you know what one last thing with the attributes you can say okay disable then equals false so goes away or true so keep that in mind all right boom right there all right that's all for attributes on pug thank you for watching and i'll see you later